revolution! <laughs> a crown befitting the new ruler of the universe! Your time is now over, Megatron. The reign of Starscream will be a reign of terror! Esteemed members of my armada, you now stand upon the very precipice of glory to meet the destiny which I have so tenaciously worked toward. Dynamic leadership of the Deceptor. Hey everyone, I hope life's been treating you well, this is Starship 65 and today I'll be bringing you a video review of the Transformers Generations Combiner Wars Voyager Class Silverbolt. We'll take a look at his accessories first. Here we have his collector's card based off the uh, Universe Silverbolt toy. At the back, that's it. And then here we have his uh, big gun from G1. Just a big long barrel gun. Now it separates into two pieces. Like so. It just pegs in right here. You got a shield, then you got the super long gun still. But for vehicle mode purposes we will peg it back together. And uh it can be stored underneath Silverbolt. If you fold in his landing gear, you got two five millimeter ports, you got five millimeter ports with them on the bottom of the gun and you can peg them in as as such and he's got landing gear sculpted in there at the bottom and you got landing gear on the bottom of the red pieces there which forms the very end's chest later on like so it's kind of like the classics toy except for the fact the gun wasn't that long and it didn't hang down as landing gear. Set the gun off to the side for now. But yes, here we have Silverbolt in his uh, in his supersonic jet mode. It's really cool. Um, very reminiscent of the Generation One toy. Got some gold striping going all the way down. Uh, with some sculpted in passenger windows, or well, this is a supersonic jet, so one of the passengers in it. But looks like windows there. You got some co you got a cockpit here. Got a nice black rubbery nose cone. Uh, Tamper graph Autobot symbols on each wing. One thing I really like about this line is that they have a lot of faction symbols on each of the toys. I know that in like Prime, for example, some of the toys just straight up didn't have faction symbols, um, which was disappointing to me. But anyway, uh, you got a thin back here. You got a uh, like a second nose cone back here. I don't know what this is for. Um, but you got a uh, you got some silver painted thrusters here. Got a gap back there. Um, and then again, you know, with silver bolt, the silver bolt, so he has to have the whole robot mode underneath the jet thing. You got his legs here. You got his arms. His head sit in though. That's nice. Um, that could be worse. You got landing gear right here that folds out like so. So yeah, for a size comparison in this mode, here he is next to the Armada Starscream mold. For generations, we'll stand them up. See that Starscream is largely dwarfed by Silverbolt. Granted, Silverbolt has this entire assembly here, which is you know goes on his rubber oh, back, which makes him longer than everybody else. Uh, I think that's about it for this mode. Um, so transform them now into into torso mode. So you gotta flip up the landing gear first, and then you gotta take the stabilizer back here, flip it to the either left or right side, doesn't matter. And then you gotta take the entire assembly here, bring it up on one hinge, then bring it back on the other, and just fold it up against what will be his back in both modes. Then you're gonna take his wings. He's going to unpeg them. You got a tab here, and it'll tab into the wing, or the excuse me, the wings will tab into the arms here. Pardon me, and bring them up like so. Now you do have some tabs here on the wings, and you have these uh, 
kind of grooves, indents here on these uh, stabilizer wings here on the sides of the sides of the cockpit area, which can peg in, but I don't want to stress the joints out on these wings, seeing as they are pinned, but I could see them breaking. So I just like to leave them uh, sit and uh, let the strength of the joint take care of the rest. Next, you want to come down here to the arms and just bring them up like so. Then you're going to come down here and flip them upside down. Then you're going to take the shoulders and just rotate them 180 on super heavy rocky joints and bring his arm down like so. Then you're going to bring it so that his arm is perpendicular to uh, the rest of his upper arm like so. Rotate the bicep and bring it down like so. Bring it down on the heavy rocky joint again. Bring the arm down. Make a perpendicular lock in, like so. Then you want to uh, take. Well, let's focus the camera. You want to take uh, silver bolts. You want to take not silver bolts. Excuse me. You want to take this entire section here. Um, let's see. You want to lift open this red section here, which will reveal silver bolts head, and although we're not putting in a silver bolt mold, we're going to deploy his head so I can flip out to Tyrion's head, um, which is very, very hard to flip out. There we are. You just push it up like so, take silver bolt's head, fold it back in, and uh, hide it. Then you're going to take Tyrion's head, you're going to bring it up on this joint right here, and then there's a secondary joint right here, which will flatten the head's platform out, like so. Bring the antenna up, and then there's a tab here that will tab into the secondary nose cone piece back here. I still don't know what that's for. And then you'll take it in like so. And uh, my superior's antennas don't stay up all the way, um, but they don't go back so far as being intolerable to the point that I'll have to take the head apart and uh, shave off some of the glue, so. Nice head sculpt though. Um, then you're going to take, if I can stand him up, take his hands and just bring them back against what will become his size, <clears throat> like so. So we can kind of stand up, kind of sort of. Then you're going to take this red piece here, and the Avi symbol, and it will separate from the rest of the red portion of its upper chest. Hmm. I'm trying to remember how to do this. It's a lot of seem to... Oh, okay. I have to unpeg Silverbolt's head again because I got it positioned wrong. You can't bring that piece up unless you have Silverbolt's head a certain way, and I had it kind of bent. Let's try that again. I'm going to flip this piece out here first, and then we'll peg Silverbolt's head back in. And then we'll bring that piece up. There we are. And that will help fill in uh, his chest cavity here in a minute. You gotta bring these pieces on double hinges. And you gotta just bring them out on this hinge. And you gotta bring them over. And you got this indentation here. And you got these protrusions here near his head. And they will go over and fit in to one another. And then, the same thing with the other chest plate. And they will interlock together to form the very end's chest. Then you take what were his kneecaps, or what will be his kneecaps, excuse me, in robot mode, run them all the way down, like so, against what are kind of his uh, armpits. And there you got the combiner part revealed. And then you have Superion, Superion's uh, torso. The so in Superion torso mode. And a really nice torso. I'll do a separate review um, at some point when I get Aeroid, excuse me, Aeroid, um, show off Superion in full. Um, but it's a very nice course of mode and it looks very nice combined with uh, everyone else that we have thus far. Speaking of which, I'm going to just do it with drag strip. Because um, it might be a while until we get the uh, Aeroid. He seems to be behind the Big Bang Toy Store as far as getting in. But, um, no, so we'll take. Superion here, and we'll transform him now into robot mode. To begin, you're going to take the fists 
and bring them back over the combiner ports like so. Then you're going to take the kneecaps and bring them back up over the combiner ports like so. <clears throat> like so. You bring them back over. And then you're going to take the bolts chest or spread on chest, you're going to split it, bring them back on double hinges against the side of this, what will be the silver bolts legs, like so. Take this uh, piece here, this crotch piece, and move it down back to his chest, and then take his head, uh, fold that in his uh, antenna, like so, and then fold his head back so that when you pick it in, you'll have the antenna sticking out of this chest beneath his pectoral area. That's neat. Pull him back over again to his proper position. Then you're going to untab uh, his legs like so from the uh, from the jet. Bring them out like so. Rotate them at the uh, the thigh. Then you're gonna come back here. And you're going to use these two uh, pieces here, and you're just going to try to fish the foot out with the heel, then close up this panel here. Then you're going to fish the heel out like so. And there you got one leg done. Though you should bring this piece up here, the, the thigh, so that it'll be in proper alignment with the rest of the knee, like so. Then you can straighten his leg out. Second first thing is the first. You're going to bring down the leg from the side of the jet, bring the leg out for clearance, fish, fish the foot out, it's quite tight in there, and then fish the heel spur out, and then close up that gap there in the back of his leg, and straighten out his leg. And I guess I had to push this chest piece in more, um, it has to lock in place which makes it so hard to get out. And bring his legs down, try to get him to stand up. You think he stands up pretty well because he has, you know, a nice heel foot assembly, but he does not like to stand. Alright, there we are. He's standing right now. So you're going to bring down the, uh, the shoulders here, like so, bring them out. Bring them down with some heavy ratchets. Bring the arms out. And then you're going to take his chest, open it up, take the head, and then pick it back in. You got two ports, and you got two hosts right here. And it will just peg in like so. And here we have Silverbolt in his robot mode. Um, and it's a very, very G1 cartoon-esque uh, silver bolt. And he looks really nice. His color placement is very indicative of Generation 1. He's got the gold um, thighs and upper arms. And he's got the white uh, lower lower arms and legs. He's got a very, very nice cartoon head. Actually got a bit of a smile on his face. Looks at him head sculpt, but he has some nice painted blue eyes. If I could get the camera to focus. That's his best look I'm going to get, I apologize. But he's a very nice cold face. And uh, overall, very nice. Again, he's got the jet on his back, but that is Silver Bolt. Um, so, articulation in this mode. His head, he can look that much up. And it can rotate. I think you can do a full 360, yeah. Although, I don't think it's on a ball joint. It's kind of on a pseudo-mushroom joint, if you look back there. You can kind of see the joint in there. Um, you've got, again, those nice, heavy, heavily ratcheted uh, shoulders. You've got ratchets at the, uh, beneath the shoulders, the biceps. And then you've got a bicep rotation. And then you've got a nice, heavy, hinged um, elbow joint, which goes about 90 degrees there. And then his wrists, if you so choose, you can just unpeg them so he can dislocate his hand. Yes, why not, right? Um, 
no loose articulation due to how his uh, head comes out of his chest. He's got ratcheted hips that go out that far. Go out farther if you wanted them to, I guess, but I'm not sure why you want to. Uh, he's got a rotation at the thigh, like so. And then he's got he's got a really goofy uh, knee knee assembly. He's got a pin here, which served as his primary knee joint. But then, because of transformation, you have to bend his you have to bend his knee in an odd position to get it to peg inside of the jet. So when he when you move his leg on um, my silver bolt here, the joint here, the main knee joint, is stronger than the other one and forces his leg backwards. So then when he's posed, it looks like he, nothing's uh, really attaching his thigh to his lower leg. Um, so you got to be careful there if it looks right. But as long as you put enough pressure on the thigh, his leg will stay in the correct position. But no, speaking of which, you got the um, got about 90 degrees at the knee. And then uh, for articulation, he has no ankle uh, tilts, but his feet can move in and out due to transformation, as well as his heel. But all in all, he is nicely articulated. He has some nice, heavy joints because he does form a torso of a much larger robot. For weapons, again, he's got his big long gun, which conceivably he can hold it, but it looks absolutely ridiculous. You can see there, it's almost as tall as him, or actually might be taller than he is. No, it's almost as tall. It goes almost up to his to his chin. So, you know, I don't know know why you want to have your feet carrying a gun that big and just look kind of silly. You can separate the gun, like so, and knock over the camera completely. Alright, sorry about that, folks. Knocked over Silverbolt 2. Um... Okay. Back to the review. He's got his gun. You can peg it into his hand, like so. Which looks better, but even at that, it's still very, very long. And then you can take his shield, you could either peg it into his hand, like so, if you wanted to. Or you can peg it into the side of his arm. Like so. I'm going to unpeg this because it just wants to stick itself in the camera lens. And we've unpeg the shield too. And set them both off to the side. They're not bad weapons, but they can get a little unwieldy at times. For uh, size comparison in this mode, here Silverbolt is next to the uh, here Universe Silverbolt mold, and this is the uh, Darkwind Toys R Us exclusive um, version. I don't have the original Universe Silverbolt, and you can see that you know, granted, Darkwind is a uh, or Darkwing, as he goes on in Generation One, is larger because he is an Ultra Class toy, um, but I think the Voyager class Commander War Silverbolt is a much better representation of Silverbolt from the cartoon um, in Generation One than this one is. This is more of an update, updated design. This is more of an updated G1 toy, somewhat. And then uh, here we have him next to the Starfin. And it's a good deal taller than Starfin. Which is nice. So, that's a Voyager should be. A Voyager should be sizably taller than a Deluxe. So, Silverbolt. Um, a lot of people complain that he's boring. His design isn't super exciting. I mean, he, again, he's got all that on his back. I mean, you look at the, uh, the Universe toy. He's got all this on his back. So it's not something you can really get away from, it's just one of Silverbolt's uh, design, not really design flaws, just how he was designed to work in with his jet mode, that's just how everything has to transform. It doesn't bother me because that's the way he's supposed to look, and I think they executed it in a good enough way um, for me not to really be bothered by it. 
That being said, I recommend Silverbolt as the best of the Aerial Bots, in my opinion. It's a really good character, and I think it's just a nice, strong, really solid feeling mold with all the ratchets and such. So I highly recommend it. This has been the review for the Transformers Generations Combiner Wars Voyager Class Silverbolt. This is in Starship 65. Thank you so very much for watching, and take care. Hey everyone, just a quick update to the uh, to the last review. I forgot to show you the weapon storage in robot mode for Silverbolt. You can take his gun and if you attach it to his uh, to his shield, like so, it can be pegged down to his back, just how it's pegged down to the bottom of the jet in jet mode, like so. Kind of gives him like a. Uh, like a third of leg to stand down to, so. But you have the option if you want it. I just thought I'd show that off. I felt bad not showing it. Alright, thanks. noise an insect makes buzzing and clacking until you crush it underfoot. That's what you are, Megatron. A bug with a big...